All right. I'm here with Joel Bartholomew from DR Foundation. Joel, thank you so much for being on the show today. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks. Can you tell my listeners, what is DR Foundation? What are you guys doing over there? Yeah, so DR Foundation was founded over 15 years ago to support the women and children in South Sudan. And really, our focus is developing initiatives to build communities from the ground up and help with sustainable farming and just basic needs that individuals need. Super cool. What are some of the ways that you guys are doing that right now? Um, well, we are actually currently trying to scale our farming initiatives so that we can make sure that people have the food that they need as a result of some of the famine that we might expect from Ukraine and Russian war. So um, we build out farms, teach people how to cultivate the farms, but also how to produce a business from the farm. So that way they have food to eat and also food to sell. Yeah, and that's helping with self-sustainability and long-term success as well, which is really cool. Right. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited to have you here for who wants to be a nonprofit heir. So let me explain how the game is going to work. Okay. All right. So Joel, you're going to be playing for up to $100 in a donation for DR Foundation. And this donation is coming from our sponsor, learngrantwriting.org, who we love because they help nonprofit professionals learn how to write killer grants for their organizations. And no matter how much money you win from learngrantwriting.org, you are going to get a free copy of their book, How to Write a Grant, which is amazing. It's like part self-help book, part how to write a grant, which is really cool. That's and awesome. the game works just like the game, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I'll ask you increasingly more difficult questions so you can win more and more money for your nonprofit. If you answer a question correctly, you can either stop playing and cash out your prize or you can choose to answer the next more difficult question. But if you answer incorrectly, you lose all the money you've earned. So the stakes are high. Okay. Okay. Are you ready for question one for $1? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. What do you call an organization that doesn't have to pay state or federal income taxes? I would say a nonprofit. That is an acceptable answer. It's really okay. a tax exempt organization. Okay. So Yay. that's correct. Yay. Hooray. $1. Are you ready for question two for $5? All right. Let's see. Let's we'll find do out it. When you ask it. <laughs> All right. In the acronym NPO, what do the letters NPO stand for? Oh, man, I want to say nonprofit organization, but I'm and not you are sure. correct. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, Joel, you've been doing great, but the questions are going to get a little harder. So, okay. I feel like this is a good time to tell you more about your lifelines in case you need them. Okay. Okay, so thanks to the sponsor, learngrantwriting.org, you get three lifelines you can use at any time during the game. The first lifeline is called Ask Ollie. I have this puppy named Ollie who happens to be the mascot for my book club, and she's very knowledgeable about nonprofit matters. You can ask her what she thinks the answer is to any question. Okay. Your second lifeline is skip this question. You just skip the question and move on to a new one. And your third lifeline, if you really need it, is rock, paper, scissors. If you're totally out of options, you can play rock, paper, scissors against me. Okay. All right. I have to warn you, I'm a world champion in rock, paper, scissors. So Are you? Okay. Yeah, so that's, that's a good lifeline. Okay, great, great. Well, are you ready for question three for $10? Sure. All right. So what do you call a contribution give it, given to cover a nonprofit's day-to-day -day ongoing expenses, such as salaries, utilities, office supplies, et cetera? So I, I want to say overhead, but I know that there's a term that my brain can't find right now. So to make sure that I'm right, I'm already going to use my lifeline. So Do it. Ollie. I'm going to ask Ollie. Okay. So Ollie perked up her ears a little bit when you said overhead. She really loved that answer. Okay. Then we'll go with overhead. Yes, that is correct. So, okay, good. Well, I used the lifeline, but that's okay. We'll 
we just wanted to make sure that we don't lose out so early on in the game. <laughs> yeah, so it can be called overhead or operating support. Operating. That's, I think, what I was trying to think of is operational support, but... Thanks. Well, you're doing too great. Many, too many terms mixed up in my head all the time. No, no, you're doing great. So, Joel, our sponsor is LearnGrantWriting.org. They help nonprofit professionals learn how to write grants to different types of grant makers. So, I was wondering, does DR Foundation receive any type of support from grants right now? We do. Um, so, one of the areas that we're working on is expanding our. Um, U.S. operations. So like I said, we've been operating in South Sudan for a long time. So the money that we've been operating under in South Sudan comes from partnerships and grants through like UNICEF and Save the Children, where we partner with them because we have teams on the ground um, where they can help deliver their services through our team. So that's where a lot of our funding comes through now, but we are currently actively seeking grants within the U.S., which is not something that we've done in the past. So it's exciting, and we hope that we can win that book to expand our abilities to really understand understand and know. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. It's great that you're already working with grants. So my next question, question four for $20 is about grants. Are you ready? Okay. We'll see. Okay. What type of private foundation derives its grant making funds primarily from the contributions of a profit making business? Um, let's get this because I don't know, honestly, the term. Okay. For that. I'll go ahead and tell you the answer. It's a corporate foundation. I did know the term for that. Again, these are too easy. <laughs> I question what I think. <laughs> like it can't be what I think it is. Yes, don't overthink it. Don't overthink I, it. I'm bad about overthinking. <laughs> All right. Well, do you are you ready for question five for $35? Let's do it. All right. So we're talking about a different type of foundation now. It's a community foundation. Okay. So what type of fund is held by a community foundation where the donor to the fund can recommend eligible charitable recipients for grants from the fund? So a donor can, with this type of fund, a donor can go to the foundation, set up this type of fund, and then recommend charities that receive money from the fund. So I'm asking you, what is that fund called? Okay, well, to keep from losing, because I'm totally drawing a blank, let's play rock, paper, scissors real quick. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to say rock, paper, scissors, shoot, and okay. then my shoot is going to be the option. What I you're going to do. Okay, let me get in your head for a second. All right, I got you. Okay, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, oh, a tie. It's, it's so, two in your head. So in a tie, we'll go two out of three. Okay. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, you won. Okay. So I did paper and Joel did scissors. So he won that lifeline. So a fund that's held by a community foundation where the donor recommends charitable recipients is called a donor advised fund. Donor advised fund. I didn't actually know that. I wasn't overthinking at this time. Okay, good use of the lifeline. So now moving forward, you're out of lifelines. You can choose to stop playing at any moment. Okay. So the only thing you want to avoid doing is giving a wrong answer. So if you don't know the next question, I would recommend just checking out of the game and you can get your $35 donation. Okay, let's let's do that. I will at least hear the question before I Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is question 6 for $50. What is the minimum charitable contribution a donor must make before a nonprofit is required to provide written acknowledgement of the donation? I think I know, but I'm not confident in it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check out of the okay. game. But I would love to like hear what the answer is for sure. The minimum amount that you need to acknowledge writ in a written acknowledgement is $250. Even though it's not required to provide written acknowledgement of donations under $250, obviously I recommend providing written acknowledgement for any type of gift. So I was wondering, Joel, how does DR Foundation like to show thanks when donors contribute to your mission? Well, we're always trying to connect on that one-to-one -one level with anybody that's interested in the foundation. So we're always looking for new ways that we can connect donors to our mission so that they can understand not only what we are doing, but 
where their money is going and how it's impacting those that they're that they're wanting to donate for. So we always start with a thank you, no matter how small, whether that be just an email, um, some sort of acknowledgement on our in social media channels or in any kind of newsletter that we send out. So we we have the same philosophy, no matter how small, it's something that somebody's giving because they wanna support us. So the most important thing we can do is thank them for what they're doing. Absolutely, I love that. Yeah, talking about the direct connection between donations and impact is always a great strategy. So yeah. t I would love to hear a little bit more. One thing I know that you're an expert in, Joel, is, is data. And so I'd love to hear how does DR Foundation collect and analyze data to show funders and donors, you know, about its work? Um, well, we are in the process of building out a lot more data infrastructure to capture what we are doing because that's one of the areas that we don't have as much and i think it's an area that a lot of nonprofits tend to lag behind because you get so focused on your mission and making sure that you're delivering relevant impact to the people that you're trying to serve that sometimes you forget the importance of collecting the information to be able to tell other people about what you're doing so we have regular reports that we have to provide as part of the grants for unicef and our other partners overseas for um, the work that we're doing that just talks about the impact of what we're having but what we're trying to do is build a little bit more of a robust system where it's easier to collect the information so that it's also easier to display the information because one thing i tend to find is um, sometimes you create this complicated process or all these ways that that has to be input and it creates a, a more of a burden for your program teams that are trying to input that information but also for anyone trying to extract the information for grants or for marketing materials so it's we're trying to create and what everyone i think should do is create like a seamless system and as much as possible be within one platform to be able to communicate those things in between people and, and understand what's going on. Yeah, do you have any tips for nonprofit leaders to create a seamless data collection system? So it, it really depends on what stage you're in. Um, what I normally recommend to people, especially if they're early on into that is find a system that integrates with things that you're already using um, and I, I had the opportunity to talk a little bit of last week on a webinar about scarcity mindset. So one thing that I see too is a lot of organizations and leaders at nonprofits, we get into the scarcity mindset, worrying about the resources that we have and whether we're gonna be able to have resources in the future. So we sell ourselves short on what we really need and we try and find some piece together solution to do what we want. I would recommend not doing that. Figure out what you need figure out what it costs based on really what you're trying to achieve, something that integrates with what you're using and that's scalable so that as you grow, it can grow with you and don't sell yourself short. So don't try and find the cheapest thing that you can do. Try and find the thing that works best for you. And if that means you have to do special fundraising or something in order to be able to work towards that goal, it's much better to do that than to try and piece it together and spend a lot more time, effort, and energy trying to use this cheap piece of technology that maybe doesn't do exactly what you want, but it's cheaper. You know, in the long run, we end up spending more on personnel and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's, that's a great advice. Like you said, you do end up spending more on personnel. And, and even if you know, you're a lot of times nonprofit leaders will think like, well, I'm already paying this person's salary. So that's a sunk cost. Well, but it's not though, because that person is now allocating their time towards something that they don't necessarily need to allocate their time toward. They could be doing something that they're more productive and efficient at doing uh, with their salary dollars. Mm -hmm. So hundred percent. Awesome. Well, Joel, how can listeners support DR Foundation and the people of South Sudan right now? So you can go to drfoundation.org. Um, we have some donation links on there, more about our programs and services that we're doing. Um, we are in the process of putting together a big launch for a huge initiative that we're calling South Sudan Will Never Starve Again. And really, we're setting a big audacious goal to be able to create as much farmland as possible within South Sudan and teach sustainable community farming 
and create communities that can grow and expand. And then once we can address people's food needs, we can really work to help build entrepreneurial type endeavors and things like that, that we have programming for. But right now we're focused on food because we see this kind of coming famine and in areas like that, that it's gonna be a huge impact to them. So we wanna try and get ahead of that. And then once we can take that pain or that need away from people of food, then we can focus on all the other things they need to grow and thrive. Absolutely. So that's drfoundation.org and dr is spelled D-I-A-R. But listeners, wherever you're listening or watching this podcast now, you can uh, go to the description and I've got a link there for you to make this easier for you to find. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Joel. I really appreciate you. And I'm going to send you your 35 down your $35 donation and your book, How to Write a Grant by Meredith Noble over at learngrantwriting.org.